My real name is Sally Ann. I hate that. Oh, I have lots of other names, so I'm Sally Sunshine when I'm working. I'm Sally Rose when I'm performing. I live a lot of my life in a state of delusion, I think. Hello, Sally speaking. Oh, that's lovely. No, I never, I never mix the two. Um, I want to focus purely on your kids. Oh, I'm glad I can do it for you. Thank you. It's a coping mechanism. You just lie to yourself continuously. I can bring your kids. <laughs> no, I don't want to bring my children. <laughs> Definitely not. Because if you just every day had that reality that my kid is really freaking sick, you wouldn't be able to get through a day. I don't think I could get through a day. I still even think about it now. Look at me. <laughs> I can't let that be part of my mindset ever. Come on, here we go. So my name's Amanda Jane Smith. I describe myself as a mother, gardener, take no shit but give a shit ologist. Love nursing, as you can see. If you were looking for an analogy to draw between my life and the chickens, there's always someone who's the weaker member and they tend to get um, not as much of the food as they should, so I always keep an eye out for that chicken because it changes. One of the most challenging things about having a child with a disability is trying to balance everything up and get everything done in the day. You still have to go to work, you still have to get all of the housework done. But it's this other weight as well, so I'm making decisions for both children. That child doesn't fully comprehend what's going on for this child, and this child is intellectually disabled and has no concept of what's coming, and they both need me equally. Where's Maddie? There. There. What you doing? Tent. Tent? Yes, you're in the tent. Oh dear. Oh, yes, oh dear. <coughs> Madeline's diagnosis was never very clear for anyone. For many years, we had put the label of cerebral palsy there because it's mostly kind of fit. It took a while. When they said, oh, you need to come in and have a chat, I was like, shit. OK, and we'll get the senior geneticist from Melbourne to have a chat. Fuck. I'm by myself with my two young children and she pulls out a piece of paper <laughs> that she's printed off the internet and has a yellow stick at night and a Facebook group and gives it to me. I got home get through tea and then sat on the couch with a big, strong whiskey and tried to understand the diagnosis. And it was horrendous. CV and I just want to wish you a very happy birthday. I hope it is absolutely amazing. I'm so glad to be making They it. are the kindest human on the face of the earth. They never put themselves first, ever. That's probably the only naughty thing they do. It's like, come on, just think about you. What do you want for once? <laughs> I got told Will wouldn't be getting better about three times. And then the main paediatrician at the Royal, she sat me down and she's like, I don't think it's sunk in yet. And she ran through, we don't know what it is. Even if we don't have a diagnosis, we see this series of events, there's only one end game and it's not gonna get better. And when she said it, that's when it really sunk in and that was real. And I can't see past that. I've got this big plate of emotional shit that I have to carry and somehow 
behind my back so that my kids don't see it. I had to just pop her diagnosis to one side. Then I rang Amanda and that's when I had a real conversation though. You know, it's not someone trying to make me feel better, it's someone saying I understand, which is priceless. She actually said, thank fuck. Like, I wouldn't wish this on you, but thank fuck, because now I know someone else understands as well. And um, that was a really, oh, can I say a beautiful moment in that, in that horribleness. Period. Just knowing someone else understands. And I think every human wants that. It's just basically like a peacock and a peahen. You know how the peacock's like really just outrageously beautiful and the peahen's kind of dull and, you know, no, brown? No, not at all. <laughs> we are survivalists and we just have to roll along with dreadful, shitty things and the way we cope is humour. And if you don't have that, then the world can be a very sad place. Yeah, and we don't want to be sad. We don't. And I actually said to Wilson the other day, when I'm doing this set, what would you like me to tell my friends to use instead of the word retard? And I went, oh, that is so easy, Mum. ScoMo. <laughs> <laughs> You're a smart kid. Yeah. We thought that not everyone else is lucky enough to have a best friend yep. who is in the same position, so we thought we'd share it with everyone. We also didn't know whether other people did talk as openly as we did. All right, hello. This is the first recording of our podcast, Gin in a Mug. Our podcast is about a very exciting, fun topic. So cheerful. It is about having, uh, now what's the politically correct, comfortable <laughs> phrase? I believe, Sally, it's called a life-limiting condition. Mm. We decided we're going to talk about that because already our kids started off having disabilities and then we found out later on that they weren't going to just live with those disabilities their whole life. Oh, they will. It's just not going to be a long one. <laughs> it's not going to be very long. Um, we're laughing, but that's what we do when we feel like shit. So cheers, Sally. Cheers. For anyone out there who's doing the NGIO rounds, it will take its toll. Can't I just sit in my car and cry? And he went, oh, love, you're going to have to pay for a ticket eventually. You can't just sit here. I said, it's an hour parking. I just pulled up. <laughs> Doesn't sleep at night. Incontinent. It's that background hum. They are sure it's got nothing to do with her grey matter heterotopia. They think this is something different. Oh. <laughs> and so I'm about to start prepaying her funeral, and I'm not even kidding. It's You're like, such a Capricorn. I am. <laughs> All this is going on, and then you're living with grief. So from the numbers, I think overall bone density, it's at the level of osteoporosis. So whether that actually means they've got osteoporosis. Is that from lack of weight bearing or diet? Lack or? of weight bearing, lack of hormones running. Sorry, I've got to see yeah. who it is. Hey, sweetie, what's up? Oh gosh. All right, sweetie, I'm, I'm just doing the podcast with Sal, so I've got to go. Hi, Sam. I recently had a conversation with him where he said, how long is Maddie going to live for, Mum? And he said, what, 60? I said, probably not, sweetheart. He said, 50? I said, no, sweetie, if she's lucky, maybe in her 30s, it could be sooner. And I said, but that's a long way off. But for him, that was just... It's hideous, you know, he's 12. He's had enough trauma in his life and that's so, I think sometimes what he does is what any child does, is shut it down a little bit to protect himself. We both say things all the time, but they're words that haven't sunk in yet. Correct. And I think the other day was the first time you went, I can't keep doing this. I 
things aren't great, but they're not worse, which I'm gonna take that as a win. Um, and we got the MRI back and that wasn't too much worse, so it's not happening too quickly, which is good, because it's brain atrophy. Um, and so that, I'm gonna take that as a win as well. <laughs> I said to her, right, so we've got no answers, but we've got no more questions, which is a bonus. So I'm happy with that for the moment. Every day, there is that moment where I have to go and check on Will. I don't want to because I'm scared that's gonna be the day when they're not awake. Sometimes I put it off and I don't go check and then I feel really guilty and I wonder, oh God, if I'd checked five minutes earlier, I could have, you know, stopped something or caught something. They told me to write down some letters and every fucking thing fit. Mm. Every single one of the major things fit. I think one of the traps you fall into in the special needs parenting community is a culture of coping without examining the mental landscape that goes along with that. So my beautiful daughter, she's just such a magic kid. <laughs> with that one, Mum. Okay. And I love her to bits, but I do have two children. Madeline's care needs are one-on-one, -on -one, 24 seven. He needs to have time with me that isn't dependent on a sibling that has pooed their pants yeah. or a mother that hasn't taken care of her own health. It's also one of the hard things is, in some ways, I'm holding her back. I know, you want to protect them, but at the same time, like any kid, you've got to let them out into the world a little bit. Exactly, and so I've made the decision that I am going to start to do some overnight respite. That sits very uncomfortably with me, but I have three people in my family to think of. Starting doing a little overnight sleepover with a very trusted uh, support worker who's been with Madeline for a very long time. Do you worry that people are going to judge you for it? Absolutely. There's a couple of aspects to what they're judging. The first is that they're judging me poorly for, you know, banishing my child to out-of-home care, but the other is the judgement that how stupid you should have done this much earlier, how could you do this to your other children? Which one is more important than the other? There is no answer to that. They are equally important. And it's also, if you don't survive, how do you look after your kids? said to specialists, I get this is fascinating. There is so many parts of this puzzle that you've never seen before and that shouldn't go together. But this is my freaking kid. You have to remember that. And I'm their mum and some decisions I make you won't agree with, but I've got to make sure that they still enjoy life. I've just learnt to feed them and do all that stuff so they can stay at home rather than in the hospital. So it's not a full delusion, but it's like just trying to push it down under the surface all the time. So that's not going to ruin the life we have. Will has actually got quite bad osteoporosis already. And we would just been asking to get a scooter. Yep, get a scooter, we're going to the skate park. And now they're scootering and falling over. Can't watch, just listen for the thump and then I look. Part of it, like I know the reality, but 
you've got to just not wrap them up in cotton wool. We went back to visit primary school the other day Aww. and everyone was just so happy to see mm. Will and they are so loved by so many people. Our children are never our own. I think about all the other people who are in like Maddie's life, different therapists and different support workers who genuinely love her. You are the most stoic person <laughs> I have ever met. We even looked up stoic ones because it's not meant to be a positive, apparently, but it is. Every other person I know would have been a broken mess and not keep going and you mm. still find the joy in life. Mm and keep fucking going, and that is Ow. spectacular. Like, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I was gonna hope you were gonna say my fabulous good looks and my amazing charm. Oh, you've got a great t-shirt collection as well. I, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> I do. Um, thank you, that's mm. lovely. We're gazing into each other. I know, well. yeah. I just am always in awe of what an amazing mother you are in the shittiest of circumstances frequently. You're an incredibly loyal friend mm -hmm. and it wouldn't matter how shit it got, mm. you'd be there for me and now I'm just, I think you're wonderful. Oh. Stop it. All right, that's enough emotion. <laughs> no, no, we don't do emotion. We, we don't normally. We're Capricorn Spectrum people, we don't do that. It's, <laughs> we don't comfortable.